Hello and welcome to the fourth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering adding a player into our game as well as adding in some assets. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this series and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the assets of this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So the great thing about modern day game development in engines like Unity and Godot and Unreal is they have the ability to add in pre-made assets. There's no need to kind of worry about having to make your own assets anymore. There's plenty available out there but you should always credit anybody who creates an asset for you or where you've got an asset from it's always common decency so in this case we are going to add in some assets that unity has specifically made for people like you who are watching this who want to get into game development and need a good start they are the starter assets so to get the starter assets you need to head over to the unity asset store now, many years ago, the Unity Asset Store used to be incorporated in the engine itself. So if you're using an old version, you might still be able to get it there. However, if you just head into Google and type Unity Asset Store, it'll bring you right here. So make sure you are logged in. Uh, I'm not going to go through the Asset Store. There's literally tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of assets that you could use in here. But the one we're after is Starter Assets. So if you head into search and type in Starter Assets, it will bring up a couple of different ones down here. The one we're interested in is going to be this first person one. So if you click on the first person starter asset, you'll be presented with the main screen. All you'll need to do is, if you already have it, open it in Unity. If not, this button will say add to assets. And once you do, it will have a pop up at the top to say, yep, add it to Unity. So once you do that, if you go back to the engine, it will pop up with the package manager. Now you can see all the assets that I've had uh, over the years doing various different things. But if you've not got this asset installed, all you will need to do is click on download at the top. Mine says redownload because I've already got it installed for convenience. And then click on import. You may get a couple of messages saying you need to upgrade, you need to convert, do whatever else. Just click yes, follow it all through. The project will restart and you're all good to go. So what it will do is add this starter assets folder. And obviously you can add other starter assets like the third person controller as well, if you want to, that's entirely up to you. So there isn't too much to really worry about in here. A lot of this stuff we don't even need to touch. What we do need is to go into the first person folder and go into prefabs and you'll see a couple of different options here. So before we go any further, what is a prefab? So a prefab, you can think of it as it's a collection of different objects that you can drag into a scene to create one whole object. So in this case, if we were to drag in this player capsule into our scene, you'll see it's a nice pink blob. That is a prefab. And it's highlighted here because you can see there is different things underneath that main player object. That's brilliant. That's exactly what we need. So why are we using this? Well. To create a controller from scratch it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of programming. We haven't even touched programming yet in this series. If you want to know how to make your own controller, I recommend going over to Comp3 Interactive. He has a fantastic in-depth tutorial of making your own first-person controller. Uh, so head over there if you want to do that. That's Comp3 Interactive. So what can we do with this particular player controller? Not a lot right now. If we press play we're not going to see a whole lot. We're going to see the camera lying on the floor and a pink blob in the distance. Why is that exactly? Well, at this point, we haven't set our camera. We haven't done anything with our camera, have we? We've just left it there at the top. We've had a look at it in the inspector panel, but now we need to actually do something with it once Unity has decided that it's actually going to let me see the game view. Sometime today. Sometime today. I love Unity. Anyway, as you can see, camera's on the floor, pink blob right there. So let's now sort that out. 
how do we sort that out? Well, it's actually very, very easy. On here, you've got player camera root. And you'll notice that it's just an object. There's nothing in the components, none at all. So what we need to do is add our main camera onto this object here. So you can drag and drop onto there. Next thing we need to do is set the position as zero. And what this will do is rather than set the position to zero of the scene, it will set it to zero of its parent object. In this case, it will set it to dead center of the camera root. It looks a little low for my liking. You know, we're not a child here. We're not, we're not a small boy. So let's bring the camera up just a little bit, maybe just above the pink blob. So let now press play and let's see what will happen. Fingers crossed, we'll be able to actually walk around and look around as intended. And we can. Wazd to move or arrows. But if you notice, it's taken a lot of mouse movement to turn around. Let's sort that out. So in the settings for our player capsule, you'll find a load of different things. So it's also worth mentioning at this point, a component inside the inspector panel can also be a script like it is right here so if make sure you select on the capsule there if we go down we can see player speed sprint speed rotation speed we can see tons of different things that we can change so we can modify we can customize a lot of different things about this particular object so let's do that right now let's change our move speed to six Let's change our sprint speed to 10. Rotate speed, it's quite slow, so I'm thinking maybe we need to make it three times better. So let's set that as three. Now there are plenty of other things here, like you've got jump height and gravity. So if you want some kind of wacky gravity going on, so you jump really high, takes ages to come down, that kind of thing, you would just play around with these settings. And I would absolutely recommend playing around with some of these settings. So let's now press play, having changed just those three things, the speed, sprint speed, and the rotation speed. And hopefully we should be able to turn a bit faster. Might be a little bit laggy on your screen at the moment. I'm actually on battery power. I've forgotten to plug in my, um, my laptop. So yeah, if it's laggy, I do apologize. But we can see that our move speed is okay. But let Let's change it here. Let's put it really fast. So we should be able to go much faster there. And hopefully you've seen something there. Oh, oh gosh, that was laggy. Okay, yeah. I, sh I should have really plugged in my laptop before I did this. Anyway, so the move speed, change it to what you want. Rotation speed. I, I like to be able to rotate not too fast, but not too slow. Uh, heading down, there are plenty more options that you can go through. I'm not going to go through too many of these anymore, to be honest, because a lot of them aren't really relevant to us right now. They're not going to achieve much. Um, one thing we will quickly change just to see how it looks is change the jump height to 10. And then we will press the space bar and we will jump. Hopefully. Again, when Unity has uh, decided it's going to let me do it. So quite high, which is all good and well. Perfect. So what else can we do? Well, I think we should add in some more assets because, yeah, we've got a player. We can actually move around our scene now, but there's not a lot to move around into. So let's add a couple more assets in. Let's go to our assets, right click, create folder. And I'm going to call this, I'm just going to call this folder assets as well. Because this folder is now going to contain any objects that we bring in. In fact, let's call it, uh, let's rename it as object assets. There we go. So in here, I'm now going to drag and drop a couple of these assets. And as mentioned previously, if you head to the description or the pinned comment, you'll find a link to my Patreon page where you can download these assets for free. Just unzip them, uh, extract them, and then drag and drop them into Unity. So what we're we trying to do here, well, we're just trying to show that it doesn't matter 
what kind of object assets you have, how many object assets you have, you can just bring them into Unity. But depending on the object itself, it may or may not require some material work. So for example, this armchair, let's drag and drop this into our scene. It's a little bit small, but let's increase the size to, I don't know, three by three by three. It's still rather small, isn't it? Seven by seven by seven. Okay, it's a bigger chair now. Let's pull it out the ground and let's rotate it. There we go. It's probably too big now, but it doesn't matter. We can always change it. So you'll see that it doesn't quite look right. It's just this white chair and I don't want it to be white. So that means the material itself needs some work. So you can either use the material called leather and apply it, or you can use the material that is already attached. Now, if we go to the chair itself and go to the main object, you can see that the material is indeed material. So what happens if we drag and drop this leather material onto our chair? It changes it. Perfect. So do you remember what we did with the normal mats for our walls and our floor? Well, let's do the same here, except let's do it straight on the object itself. So let's click on the chair where it says null, click down here, and let's change the normal map to zero. It looks nice and smooth and shiny. So let's have it as 0.2 maybe, just to give it a little bit of texture. And we could change the metallicness a little bit of it, and smoothness, make it look a bit more like a chair, I guess. Play around with those settings if you want to. Let's also add in the other object we brought in, which is a bed. So let's drag and drop into here. Now, if we double click this bed over here in the hierarchy, you can see it is huge. It's humongous. It's a massive bed. So in case you hadn't already noticed, these two uh, assets were intentional for this particular tutorial because they both have different problems, you could say, and how you can overcome these problems with bringing in assets. So the bed itself, if we go and drill deeper into it, we have the bed, we have the mattress, and we have this gigantic plane. So if we were to try and delete the plane, it would disappear. But this bed is still far too large. So if we zoom in, we can see, yeah, OK, well, the plane was most of the problem. But if we zero out the position and then double click on the bed again, you can see if we zoom out, the bed is still far too large. That is a massive bed. So what do we do? Well, we change the scale. Let's make it one tenth of its original size. So rather than use an integer for the scale, let's use a decimal. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. Still looks rather large. Maybe we could do with pulling that down a little bit more. So let's do 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03. Now, the illustration I'm trying to make here is that you can have these numbers to a lot of decimal places. So even if this bed was 10 times bigger, you could still have the scale as 0 0.003 and it would look about normal. So let's pull it out the ground and let's pull it over here. You know what, that chair's bothering me. I'm going to reduce the size to five, five, five. Let's bring it down to the ground. Lovely. So the bed, finally, let's go to materials. And you can see that there are multiple different materials within this game object. So we can apply different ones to different sections if we want to. So if we look, we can see we have all of these. So we've got ones for mattress here. So let's try applying this to the mattress. Yep, that looks good. And what else do we have? Let's apply. Mm, let's apply this to the metal. There we go. So yeah, that bed looks kind of decrepit. It looks okay. But once again, remember, play around with those settings because you never know what you can do with some of the settings in the material. Like for example, this one doesn't have a normal map on it. So before we end this, let's quickly add a normal map. So let's take that bed texture, Alt Control, Press D to duplicate. Uh, rename it if you want to. Set it as a normal map. Apply. Let's go back to our object. Let's go to uh, normal map. But do you remember clicking that little button? 
Let's not do that. Let's drag and drop onto that little box there. And then you can play around and make the mattress look as grim as you want, as shiny as you want, or just nasty. It's up to you. Uh, so finally, let's press play one more time and let's have a look at these assets that we've just brought into our game. Using our player, of course. There we go. So it tells me I think our player needs to increase in size a little bit. So let's try doing that. Let's take our player capsule and let's see what happens if we increase the scale to three by three by three. Double click. You can see he looks quite large, maybe too large. Maybe let's try two, two, two. So it adds everything in proportion now. So this is the joy and beauty of being able to scale things within Unity, whether it is a player or whether it is just an asset like a bed or a chair. Perfect. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to look into some physics. Physics are a vital part of any game. Like no matter what game you have, physics are important. And if you play this game right now that we have, you would end up walking through the bed you would end up walking to the chair. Things just don't function quite right. So physics are our next topic. And remember, the assets that are in here are on my Patreon page, link in the description and in the pinned comment if you want to go and get it. And remember to subscribe to the not to notification bell. I don't think you can subscribe to the notification bell. Just subscribe, click notification bell, stay up to date with every tutorial, and I will see you next time.